Legend of Zelda. Mojo Plays. Today, we're ranking all of Princess Zelda's designs. Something the Legend of Zelda character artists do very well is purpose, as in, does the look of the character suit their role in the story being told? For Princess Zelda, Nintendo has produced some near-flawless designs, but not without fail. Though, with everything, it is largely subjective. Now, if Nintendo somewhere somehow signed off on it, she's going on the tier list, spin-off games and cartoon appearances included, just for fun. Chime off with your favorites and why in the comments, subscribe if you're interested, and let's do this. Kicking us off, we have the first depiction of Zelda, which had her play the role of damsel in distress to a T. Here she is designed with light, sometimes red-toned hair, and a pink full-length gown. Kind of. Because of color limitations on the NES, Zelda actually matches whatever ring Link has equipped, so her single appearance in the first game at least may display as green, white, or red. This is a design the Zelda series could have been built off of more directly, as seen as recently as Breath of the Wild's concept art, showing a sketch for a red-clad Zelda with an orange tint to her hair. But we see pretty quickly this isn't what the creators had in mind by all other depictions of her. The generic maiden look worked for the basic story but lacks any recognizable elements element as is, and quite frankly will never be what you picture when considering Hyrule's princess. What do we think, chat? Is D tier too mean? It's not really Zelda. The red hair could have been cool. They didn't stick with it. It's kind of like Samus. She had red hair. And uh, maybe Peach had red hair too? Probably happy with it at the bottom here to start. D tier. Nice job, hero. Hey, excuse me, princess. That's right, we're doing them all. The animated series had little to work off of in terms of character design and story, but opted for a few interesting depictions of the heroes, like making Link into a raging bro. Saved you again, princess. Kiss me. Oh, darn. I forgot about these helmets. No, I didn't. Zelda took an adventurer's sidekick role, so she was given a vest, pants, and riding boots, along with an early transition to long blonde hair. The look is kept stripped back and simple for animation as was needed, though she does get a bit of extra detail in these poofy sleeves and high collar. I think it's giving just enough personality to be recognizable as Zelda, but she could still get lost in a crowd shot from early He-Man or She-Ra. It's okay, especially because all they really had to work with was sprites and some concept art. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, Zel it's Zelda-esque. Flavors of Zelda. Could be better, could be worse. We'll put, we'll slap her in C. C tier. That key belongs to the kingdom of Hyrule. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Captain N was a late 80s attempt at crossing over gaming franchises with very loose depictions of the original character's personalities. Simon Belmont, vampire hunter at your service, your loveliness. Not only am I tall, blonde, and handsome, I'm quick on the draw. Princess Zelda is almost a direct rip from her cartoon series, with the curious choice of putting her in a crop top and giving her a sash. It's almost looking like an early Gerudo-inspired look, if anything. But there is one saving grace in her design, that she has this asymmetrical glove on one arm, which she uses to draw her bow. That's a pretty neat detail we haven't ever seen for her, and being besides magic, Zelda is fairly often put into the role of an archer who would use one of these. So, not bad. Okay, I'm tempted to put her high C, but the overall look is a little messier. The glove is awesome, the vest and sash is a little unnecessary, maybe. Let's say side-by-side -side C tier. The Link to the Past Zelda is a curious case of sprite art meets interpretation. For instance, Link's hair is pink, likely due to hardware limitations of giving him the pink bunny form and his sprite could only have so many colors, but we're really meant to imagine it as blonde seen throughout the series' key art. Princess Zelda herself is depicted in one of her most iconic forms, one that would return and be reiterated on several times over, but more so in the promotional art like the game's physical manual as opposed to the in-game sprite itself. Her actual appearance in Link to the Past itself has a dark purple dress with dark hair, which doesn't have the same punch as the hot pink on white robes. Because if you're looking for royal elf vibes, this art is the one which jump started it all, but we'll have to wait before this look comes full circle. So the art was a little hard to pick, uh, the art is so much different from the sprites and even to other art, and she has like a costume change in the middle. 
but overall it's it's pretty good it's a good start right it's not quite uh drop dead uh that's awesome yet b tier you've killed me good Somewhere, somehow, a Nintendo person signed off on the Philips CDI Zelda's appearance, and that means she's going on the list. Now, I'm gonna say something crazy. This design slaps, dude. The Faces of Evil's Hyrule is an unbelievably comedic take on the kingdom, and it has a goofball princess to match. She's hyper-casual, rocking a simple vest, belt, skirt, silly hair, and cartoonish demeanor. And hear me out, it translates shockingly well to 3D, as evident by several CDI Zelda mods for modern Zelda games. The outfit suits a Zelda spin-off where she's a little less careful about being royalty, it's just not a very good video game, so I've heard. But how could you hate this face, come on, I stand by it, the design has legs. I, I gotta do it, I'm tempted to say S, but I'm not gonna do that to you, I don't think that's actually fair. Really cute, uh, coulda worked. Uh, if it was not, uh, the Philips CDI home entertainment system and, uh, yeah, big old mess there. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slap, I'm, I'm gonna slap it low A, right? Low, barely, it's Zelda, right? You look at her, you, it looks like old internet Zelda. Don't, uh, don't freak out too much. It's gonna be lots of, lots of, lots of wiggle room here. A tier. Ocarina of Time Zelda is a key moment in her evolution. She entered the three-dimensional world and surprised us all with the depth of her story involvement and the several different forms we witnessed her progress through throughout the adventure. The main dress faithfully translates the armored elements from the previous game's key art with the shoulder pads and royal crests, plus all new to Ocarina's depiction, her hair is pulled all the way back behind a tiara, and arms are covered by full-length gloves to sell the royal vibe. Without forgetting to mention that this is one of the more elven-looking Zeldas with extra-long ears and ornate jewelry. When the reveal happens that, oh snap Ocarina of Time spoilers 3 to 1, Sheik is a Zelda Sheik is a Zelda. Sheik is a disguise for Zelda. It's made all the more impressive simply by how pretty she is. Yeah, she was this badass ninja, but she was also this clever girl you met in childhood. Almost S, but there's a few alterations on this idea that cut to the core of what Zelda can be more efficiently. Okay, alright, the big one. Caused the ripples that changed all future designs. It, it's gotta go way up here. It's gotta be like a 10 out of 10 if it's S, and this is like a 9 out of 10, so we'll put her high a above CDI, obviously classic, iconic, most Zelda E Zelda high A, A tier. <laughs> Oracle's games don't give us a ton of Zelda to work with, but I feel it should deserve special mention for how good of an in-between this is for a Zelda in the stage of life between Ocarina's young and adult depictions. Her key art leans into the princessy garnishes that the adult Ocarina Zelda had, but also depicts her with a purple cape for a whimsical finish. That said, the actual sprites leave some to be desired, it's only recognizable as Zelda because of a gold crown tacked atop her head. Alright, we're back, a cutesier version of Ocarina. Karina. I like the little hair bangs in the art, but we just, we didn't get much of it, and the sprite is only okay, so it's not quite uh, serving like Ocarina, but it is good. So definitely, definitely high good tier. Mm, B tier. <laughs> Toon Zelda, the matching half to Toon Link, shares the spotlight in the Wind Waker, Spirit Tracks, and a slightly altered sprite version in the Minish Cap. She takes what works from Ocarina's dress with a few more simplified elements. The white gloves remain, she has a large, chunky gold belt, and utilizes more vibrant pinks and purples from her previous color schemes. It's charming and on par with other Zeldas, though as a pseudo player 2 character she takes a back seat without any innovation to this look over the span of the three toon style games. I don't think she's in Phantom Hourglass and we're not counting Tetra's look. Toon Zelda's great, she's cute, probably exactly what they wanted, she has exaggerated features from Ocarina. High, high A tier, definitely up there. If you wanted to put this above Ocarina, it's probably, you know, that's that's totally valid. But ultimately, it's kind of, it's playing off of it as opposed to doing its own thing, which is fine. A tier.
The Four Swords Zelda may be the youngest Zelda has been depicted visually. The kid Zelda from Ocarina was around 9 maybe, but with the chibi art style of the Four Swords games, it wouldn't be hard to see this Zelda as young as 8 or so. Because of this, her most notable feature is the comically large red bow on her head. While it does immediately convey her here as a light-hearted lassie, it also clashes with her massive ponytail, hair bun, cape, and pointy ears of her sprite, making her look somewhat of a smorgasbord of features. This iteration's outfit is hard to depict as anything else but a small child, and basically the overall concept was already mastered in the previous title of The Wind Waker which launched just a year prior. They just needed to remove like one or two things, like keep the ponytail, lose the bun, keep the bow keep the ponytail but like all together eh, you won't see much of this one on the on the fan art circuit uh, but certainly you know more Zelda E than Zelda 1 D tiers sorry Twilight is Zelda's biggest deviation from the familiar, the art style dips into dark fantasy. The monsters are grosser, the people are grosser too, but it's very unique. Brunette Zelda is extra, extra regal and has a more grim demeanor due to her environment, and is first depicted wielding a full-on sword and using it to defend herself. Again, not counting Tetra. This design was also utilized for Smash Bros. Brawl when Nintendo started leaning into adding realistic fabrics and weathering to characters' clothes. Thus, the first true appearance of stitchings, seams, and fabrics which truly brought her to life for fans. Just look at how many Twilight cosplays were made in the 2000s and the world was better for it. Her hair is pulled back, practical, and gorgeous. This is a Zelda you could see crossing over with traditional fantasy like Lord of the Rings. Just simply divine. I feel like this design um, call, spoke to so many people, especially like with the dark hair, because you know, you got all the all the blonde beauties here, but then like the dark hair is like, oh, oh, hold on. Easy S tier. <laughs> Skyward Zelda gave us another series first. This woman does not stop innovating. A completely non-royal villager next door Zelda. The world this time is painterly. She wears the village's only bright magenta gown, and she color matches the blue sash of the outfit with the white sailcloth Link receives to her loft wing. The design borrows the hair braids from Twilight and cutes them up into a chunkier bang, simple and utterly effective. She's a right to the point, hard on her sleeve, no nonsense gal, and if the purpose of this design was to give off person you want to be friends with, then it is near perfection. Like, she is your main objective the whole time, and they really put in stock in getting you to like her super fast, and it uh, it really works. She's just a sweet gal, so, at, so much S, all the way S. <laughs> Returning to Zelda games in 2D, back to how they began, the link between Worlds Princess is a hyper-refined version of the old ideas they always wanted. Namely, that key art from Link to the Past was finally fully modeled and came to life on 3DS hardware. It's super cutesy, yes, yet not as chibi as their tuned counterparts. Her bangs and white cape return, though we see an interesting decision to keep her solely in pink while reserving purple for her mere counterpart, instead of mixing the two colors on her body. This Zelda would replace her her Twilight design for Smash Ultimate, giving each Zelda character representation from a different title. You know the concept is strong when it's been in the vault for X number of years, still slaps, and fits into several different artistic mediums. Another one for the top, they went on like a spree. They cannot be stopped. I love how the artists went back and were like, uh, we're not done with that old sketch, actually. This is what's up. Let us cook on 3DS. And they did, and it looks fabulous. And then you you might not think this could be the main look for Zelda because it's like kind of like, it's kind of cutesy. But then they bring it in Smash Bros. And it's just like completely adorable. S tier. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Warriors games give the player ultimate power to shred through armies of ordinarily durable enemies while you play a diverse roster of heroes. They gave us a true Warrior Zelda and it is stunning. Everything is sharpened to a point, the same gorgeous hairstyle from Twilight and Skyward is here, but pulled back into a long braid with a metal hoop. Her knee pads and wrist guards end in sharp triangles, with her tall pointed tiara calling back to the Hylian sword that she has the full ability to jab enemies with in this game. The armored battle dress with its bolds, golds, and purples stand out even on this crowded roster and dare I say, this is my favorite Zelda look ever. Sheik is dripping too, don't at me. Or do, it's true. What a twist, Nintendo uh, didn't even design this one, but incredible. There's so much going on, it fits her so well keeps her personality but also like makes her go full battle beast mode which we've always wanted to see i'm sure they tinkered with this one a lot went back and forth with nintendos and it it, it was worth it s tier high s tier BOTW Zelda is back to basics and a little more bare bones than most other depictions, and like Skyward, that's not a bad thing. The simplified padded undercoat and shirt they put both Zelda and Link into was blue, which was in stark contrast to everything else they'd worn before. Purpose being, this was a new type of Zelda game that we hadn't seen before, with a more personality-driven princess. Here she acts as a researcher, cataloging things out in the world and studying to unlock her dormant powers. A dress wouldn't really have fit this depiction, so instead of high fantasy elf, she's an everyday girl who's easy to connect to and understand her struggles. What else can I say? It makes perfect sense. Why is she British? It drives me to S. I think most people would put it there. I think that is totally fair. And if I were ranking all the alternate costumes, uh, that snow jacket would definitely be like S plus. That one goes hard. That one's insane. S tier. Cadence of Hyrule is a wholly original interpretation of Princess Zelda. For the first time, Zelda sports a full-on tunic and adventurer's pants, taking a page right out of Link's book. Her most notable feature is the cutely oversized poofy hair seen in her sprite, designed to differentiate her between the titular character Cadence, who is also blonde. The choice of full purple on her clothes makes her stand out from the other sprites, reserving the pink color other Zeldas might usually wear for her explosive magic. While the key art and art style isn't my favorite, the outfit itself is super strong and finally shows us a playable Zelda that can throw down with the rest of them. No ball gown required. You know, Zelda in a tunic goes hard. There's nothing wrong with Link's outfit, just put her in that and that's exactly what we got. The sprite art is actually as good if not better than the key art. I could see some people dismissing this one, but check out some fan art of this design. You'll probably fall in love with it. A tier. Finally, TOTK Princess Zelda gets a bit more flavor in her time-bending travels. She rocks the short hair since, uh, I guess like ever, calling right back to Zelda 1 with her bob, which is fitting, as poor Zelda has to live in a Hyrule long past and dress like her ancestors. Shoutouts to Nintendo for putting her in green this time and still having it work. Is there like, no color Zelda can't rock and still be recognizable in? How do they do it? Her ancient getup covered in Zonai ruins gives her an air of mystery whenever Link can track her down in game and only amplifies what Breath of the Wild started higher, lower than BOTW, it's pretty similar in a lot of ways. The short hair is totally warranted, it, it fits her probably even better. She's more in charge and then gets up to some insane hijinks later in the game. I'll, I'll just say S tier. That's it. That's the list. What do you think? Fair? Too many S tiers? You want to hunt me down for putting CDI Zelda above a canonical design? I'd love to know. Thanks for watching. Check out our other Zelda rific content here on Mojo Plays. I've been Chip Troy. Game on.